after that tying kick to send this game into overtime. And it'll go no huddle here. A low snap. And the handoff. And it'll be brought down D Ford. What a tackle behind the line but a flag. Murray, off the face mask penalty. Free timeout. He'll drop back into the shotgun and scramble up the middle. He's got yardage. And he'll get the first. And that one's fumbled. Richard Sherman on the pickup. And that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. San Francisco will escape with a victory. Sherman with the huge play there to pick up the fumble. Quan Alexander with the sack. With the strip sack. And Jimmy Garoppolo will come on in victory formation. And San Francisco will get out of here with their first win of the season. Vaunted 49ers defensive line trying to make the stop here. Murray will, is in the shotgun. Running back behind him, two receivers out wide. And he'll hand it off on third down. And Kenyon Drake will break through for a big game. And he's still going. He'll go to the end zone for the touchdown. Kenyon Drake with a 33-yard scamper. And Arizona strikes first in San Francisco. In shotgun. Deion Lewis to block. Jones is going to air it out, and that one's going to be one-handed caught. Sterling Shepard, what a reception there. And the Giants are inside the 10, first and goal, and a great opportunity to double their lead here. 15 seconds left. Maybe you run one more play and then send out the field goal unit. Jones is in the shotgun, empty backfield. He throws, and that one's caught in the end zone for the touchdown. Deion Lewis. And on comes Mitch Wisnowski. The punt is blocked and recovered in the end zone for the touchdown. Quite a mountain to climb and not a lot of time to do it as we enter the fourth quarter here at MetLife Stadium. As Daniel Jones comes back onto the field, six minutes left in the quarter from the San Francisco 40. Jones is going to air it out here. And that one's going to be caught. Sterling Shepard again in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. What an afternoon for Sterling Shepard. Back shoulder catch here, an absolute dime from Danny Dimes himself. Garoppolo takes the snap with pressure. Then Blake Martinez with a strip sack fumble again. And this time the Giants recover it and they'll take over. Blake Martinez making all kinds of plays on that drive. And San Francisco with their second fumble of the day. And that should make this academic. Jones looking at first and goal. Wayne Gallman in the backfield. Motion on the defensive line. Niners looking for a stop here. Jones with the throw, and that one's dropped, almost caught by Ingram in the end zone. And the drop leads to second and goal. He takes it, he'll drop back to throw, and again to Ingram, and this time it's caught for the touchdown. Evan Ingram on take two of that goal line drive. Catches an easy dump off pass, and the Giants are up 6 0. You know, overcomplicating things can can really often lead to uh, you know mistakes and miscommunications and turnovers, especially. Um, and Nevada can Nevada is kind of picking up on Utah's, you know, they're trying to speed up the pace of play. Nevada, you know, as soon as they get possession, you see a lot of defensive passes. You see defensive pass to defenseman, and that could really slow down the pace of play. Um, so Nevada's really picking up on that, but Utah's obviously going to want to get the ball moving down the field faster. And that's exactly what I was talking about, you know, not just relying on the breakaways, but making sure you have consistent offensive pressure there. You see that there's three, four Utah attackers right there with Skolmoski as she gets the ball and puts it in. Gives the Utes the, the lead early in the second half. And good job there to get the goaltender moving. You know, cause a mistake, force, force the goaltender to move, you know, get her out of position a little bit, and Utah just able to capitalize on that. And good job by all those, all those attackers in the box there to, to run in, draw the defenders in, and then back out as soon as possible. You know, that's how that pass was able to get connected so easily. She was smelling the goal there, Zach. And what an opportunity there. Really good effort by Kendall Stovall. You know, just being as aggressive as possible, you know, putting it all out there and it paid off. Vander being up ahead left side. Absolutely. And for the Huskies, you know, they're, they're going to want to look to keep that balanced offense. Uh, uh, five different players have scored their first career goal this year. So that's just coming from a lot of new players coming in. Uh, nine different goal scores. That's the most since 2015. So really balanced offense here by the Huskies. And they're obviously going to look to keep that up. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to see a lot of new players and new positions here. Uh, and really, you're going to look to take less risks, risks with the ball. You know, you're going to want to play defensively sound. That's something that the Utah defense has prided themselves on this entire season. Uh, really just look to keep players, you know, moving, keep plays simple. And I wouldn't be surprised if Washington plays super aggressively at first. You know, they know just as well as, you, as the Utes do that the Utes have a lot of 
new players in defensive positions there. You even got a forward playing back there. Uh, you know, don't be surprised if Washington presses early. And what a move there. You know, Sienna Ruelas thought she had the ball. She even had it for a second. Might just be the rain. You know, wet terrain, slippery hands, especially with those gloves on. And Utah just able to capitalize off a mistake there. And what a job there by Utah to keep the ball in the air, keep the ball moving in the offensive zone. And you see there just a slip of the hand can cost you. And a good shot there and a beautiful extension by Rilas to really get a hand on that ball and, you know, anything to keep it out of the net. And you could see the frustration there, Washington, you know, obviously with so many opportunities to equalize this game. And just falling short just by that much, just by that couple inches, obviously can be frustrating. you got to keep your composure, see if you can turn things around. Michaela Christensen, you know, coming on in that recent sub. She's only been on the field for 30 seconds. But you can see that breakaway opportunity coming from a mile away. She's able to get on it, fresh set of legs, able to keep up with the ball, and just a dart into the left side of the net. A cold October night awaits us uh, along the Wasatch front. With the game high 47 degrees and northwest winds around 10 miles per hour, the sidelines will be active and the fans will be bundled. It's a beautiful night for soccer here at Ute Field. Tavia Leachman has played every minute of every game this season, save an injury against San Diego. Lulu Borges makes her third straight start in the back end, and the ever-reliable Carly Nelson will hold down the six, which is no surprise to both squads. And as we take a look at the Golden Bears starting 11, Emily Smith will start tonight on Cal's defense as she's done all season long. Emma Weston will get a nod at midfield. Abby Kim has started every game this season but is looking for her first goal since September 8th. And the freshman Angelina Anderson will start between the pipes for the Golden Bears. Mike, as we approach the start of the game here, Utah has, let, has yet to lose at home, but they've yet to beat the Golden Bears in Salt Lake City. How are they going to do that tonight? That's the best kind of soccer. Both teams coming off of shutout results in their last game. The offenses will look to heat up on a cold Thursday night, and we are away here in Salt Lake City, Utah, already with an opportunity of the right side. Haley Stodden with it. She'll get batted away. Cal will maintain possession, and we'll see a goal kick from Angelina Anderson. The freshman started every game, has played every minute except for uh, – only playing 50 against in their season opener against Weber State. Utah will punch it back out, but Cal maintains possession. Kaylee Gifford with it. She plays catch with Daisy Cleverly, who turns it up midfield to Mateo. Mateo working in. She comes in with speed, approaches the top of the box. She gets a shot off, and Carly Nelson's not able to stop it. And Cal ties it up. Cruz with 17 kills on the day. Torres back to serve. Washington State handles. The block is there. Kenzie Kerber makes the block. Washington State gets it. They have to give it over. Kerber with the chance to end it. They'll send it over. Washington State saves it. They send it back over. Torres again. Kerber again. She fires. And Washington State saves it. What an effort there. Kerber again. She'll fire. More and more of these collegiate softball batters start start to wind up and almost sort of start running before uh, before they get a chance to swing at it. Maybe it's a little bit of a boost towards first base, but it's really interesting to see uh, more and more players start to adopt that. See, the, in, the outfields are really starting to sort of creep up on the edge of the diamond here. And Castaneda starting in 31 of 42 last season for the Utes, but starting in all 36 games that she's appeared in this season, really starting to grow into that starting position. Southern Utah was, was kind of guilty of this in uh, their game with Utah. of uh, Just dropping balls, uh, misthrowing, just miscues, miscommunications, and stuff like that. So Utah really doing a good job to manage that in this game. Yeah, and in, especially in a really tight game such, such as this early, you really want to stay on top of your game. And, and up until now, Utah's really done a good job of that. Um, with teams such as, on such an equal playing field, uh, such as Utah and Weber State, it, you really, it really comes down to how effective these players are in situations such as that. So uh, Utah with some work to do just on playing smarter softball. Martinez slugging 519 uh, before her double today. So fairly active amongst this Utah roster. Third on the team, right below Heather Bowen, slugging 670. And good back control by Palacios to understand that she was behind in the count, uh, but not just swing for the fences on that one. And again, we talked about this earlier in the broadcast and something that's going to come up with teams this close 
skill set wise, you're really going to look for errors and missed catches and stuff like that to really sort of take your advantages in this game. So Utah really needs to tighten up if they expect to hold this lead. And again, the bases loaded situation does look daunting as an infielder, but it, it almost makes the defense a little easier because you have you have plays at any base. So one away. And you're going to start to see defensive adjustments by both sides as, as we get ready for the second game of this doubleheader. Uh, I would expect a, you can't really get a much lower score than this, but uh, maybe a lot tighter on the hit count. You're going to see pitchers start to, because they're coming off of just seeing these batters 30 minutes prior, uh, you're going to see a lot tighter defense. And Belloc might look to be a little more aggressive with her bat here with only one out. Um, and given the amount of errors that, Weber State has seen Utah's defense commit. Uh, she might try to just make contact with the ball in any way and maybe hope for the best. I wouldn't expect anything complicated from Vera Montez here just getting inside the strike zone. Haley Wall's really going to look to limit this Utah offense here early in this one. And similar fashion, ball's bunted to the left side, but Castaneda will reach, putting runners on first and second early with no outs here in the bottom of the first inning. And again, it's just it just goes to show Heather Bowen's just got... Hot bats early. Another three-run shot to start her afternoon. 